More than just coincidence You look around and see The earth, the moon, the sun and the sky A beautiful creation of Allah So how could you deny? How can you deny the oneness of Allah? Allahu Akbar How can you deny the oneness of Allah? Allahu Akbar Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Welcome to our episode The Philosophy of the Islamic Law And as usual we would like to welcome Professor Muhammad Naeem al-Sa'i The Professor of the Islamic Law in the American Open University in the School of Sharia. Thank you for being with us. Last time we were speaking about sincerity, that some people might be sincere in their actions, but in the, sincere in their act of worshiping, but they does not, it does not reflect on how they deal with people. And we say that it has a lacking of uh, understanding or uh, knowledge about the concept of worshipping itself. Let me ask you today about some people, they have good intention. Sometimes they have the intention that they want to pray on time or to pray all the prayers in jama'ah, for example. And they are sincere about their intention. They want really to do this actions. But it seems like this intention does not reach the point that they really do what they want to uh, do. So what, what is the reason behind this, that this intention does not lead to the action? SubhanAllah, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, Wa salatu wa salamu ala Sayyidina Muhammad, Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. It was a very original uh, Islamic philosophy. Uh, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in many verses, and even the Prophet وسلم, combined between the, the belief and the act, combined between the intention and the action. It's not enough to have a belief without action. It's not enough to have a good intention without practicing your intention. So these people might uh, be in the uh, uh, field of uh, having good intention, but they cannot transfer it to uh, the field of action uh, for many reasons. Uh, maybe they are not sincere uh, about the, uh, the result of their intention because they, they know that when they are going to employ their intention, it does require some kind of effort, mm -hmm. uh, some kind of, of sacrificing, uh, suffering a little bit maybe, losing some of, of their maybe own uh, desire or maybe some own of their their. Uh, benefit. So they are not sincere about the employment of their intention. Mm. Uh, on the other hand, uh, honesty and seriousness. It's not enough to have a good intention or to say I'm very honest, very sincere about my intention, but you are not serious. Uh, seriousness uh, does come with action. But more than that, Suppose this person said, I'm sincere, I'm honest, I'm serious, I want to pray, but I cannot pray, I don't pray on time, I miss a lot of prayer. Or maybe on the other side of the uh, right of the, the people uh, and the feed of uh, giving people the, the right, uh, being a good neighbor, good, uh, good husband, or maybe for, for women to be a good, good wife, uh, good son, good daughter, they are not doing what they wish to do. I think what, what we have to uh, remind ourselves and everyone is that the whole issue of Islamic law to be connected with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Creator. If someone does have that presence, the presence of the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mm -hmm. on his life, in his heart, when someone is uh, fully aware that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is watching him, hearing him, and seeing him subhanahu wa ta'ala and this life is very short and he is here for that very noble mission all these meanings should encourage him and put him in that level level of practicing 
in translating his good intention and claimed sincerity into the field of reality. So Islam, what, what does uh, in that regard, instead of just keep talking and reminding and convincing and advising, he said, this is the Islam, you'd like to take it to be a Muslim. We have a section of worshipping, you have to pray five times a day, you have to pay the zakah, yearly zakah, you have to fast that month. So that kind of physical, physical uh, instruction, uh, physical uh, uh, action to be uh, practiced by, by this person, to carry with it the, the reality and the practical transforming or transforming this good intention into work. Because Islam said, it is enough for you Muslim to believe in Allah subhanahu ta'ala. It's enough for you to have a good intention inside your heart. And you don't have to go to, to masjid, you don't have to, to pray, you don't have to pay zakah, like some other maybe religion or faith. It's enough for them to go like one day a week and convince, and that's it. The whole idea will, will, will be finished. Islam said, no. You need to make a combination of good intention and good work. Now, this combination by itself is going to give that person uh, enough power, enough energy, enough satisfaction to keep himself in that track, inshallah ta'ala. That will lead me to a question that somebody asked me before. If Allah knows everything, and He knows that if we have the right intention or the, we are serious or not, why He would ask us to prove it to Him by these actions? I think that the best way to answer this question, maybe we did uh, refer to this issue in, in the other episode, but in different angle maybe. But I think what could be the best to answer this uh, point, this very beautiful point, by going back to the, the definition of the right of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Mm, subhanallah. Because some people, they, they don't understand exactly what, when we say the act of worshipping in this uh, great section of Islamic law, what does it mean by saying, the right of Allah, mm -hmm. the right of the people. Subhanallah, um, uh, it came to that uh, high level of, of love, high level of mercy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by telling us, my servant, those I have created, all of you, for a certain mission in this life, all what I want from you, and this is my right upon you, as if Allah is addressing this mm -hmm. to the people, Allah created subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is my right upon you to save yourself here and hereafter. To bring happiness to you here and hereafter. This is the only what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give to the people he created subhanahu wa ta'ala that saying, this is my right upon you. Because Allah does not need us subhanahu wa ta'ala. So... When someone understands this relationship between him and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and understanding how to philosophize this commandment from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it is not something to make you in the hardship or difficulties, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. or to show that uh, you are giving something or providing something to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All Allah wants subhanahu wa ta'ala from you, to show that you are serious about saving yourself, about bringing happiness to yourself. And this is the meaning of right of Allah. It is his right to see you, or to seeing you in the field of obedience, to save yourself here in this, in this life, from miserable life, and hereafter from the hellfire. It's his right upon his creature, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it is just a reflection of how much Allah does love us, subhanahu wa ta'ala. How much Allah subhanahu wa is show, wanted to, to see or to show his mercy upon us, subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is the... The, the deep meaning of the right of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when we say the, the deep meaning of the rights of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it means basically that uh, his rights upon us, that for us to save ourselves for this, from the hellfire and from any kind of disease in this uh, life. But let me ask you, subhanAllah, sometimes people uh, going back to the previous point about the intention, when, when we say that uh, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows what is inside ourselves and he knows our real intention, then why we should uh, prove to him? Does he need us to prove to him that we are really serious about it? We are really um, sincere about it? He already knows what is in our heart. 
Yes, but um, life is, is based on, on, on uh, certain logics. And Islam is not aware or, or away from this. If you ask any person who claims that he loves that lady, mm -hmm. he loves that work or that job, he loves that school, uh, is it enough for him to keep himself staying at his home and keep claiming, I love you, my school, I love you, my, my, uh, my beautiful lady, I love you, my, my, my job, or he has to show some kind of, of, of practical uh, answer uh, to this uh, intention, practical uh, meaning to his good uh, sincerity or maybe uh, honesty. So he has to move from the level of having something in his mind, in his heart, and to make it a physical shape and physical work. This is like logic in life. Mm. Same thing. You said, I love Jannah. I love Jannah. The paradise. But yeah. you don't work for it. Mm -hmm. Right? I love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but you don't work to show that you are really a good worshiper to him subhanahu mm -hmm. wa ta'ala. You are in the feet of, of disobedience while you are claiming that you love him mm -hmm. subhanahu wa ta'ala. So but it comes to make you proving that logic issue even without feeling it sometimes. Mm -hmm. And that's why we say from, from time to time, uh, yes, it is his right upon us to save ourselves, as we say that he's right upon us to worship him alone, subhanahu wa ta'ala. But even when we worship, worshiping him alone, subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's not because he does need someone to worship him, as mm -hmm. because he does deserve that, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yes. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. When he is commanding us to worship him, as and, and, and showing our sincerity, our seriousness, our uh, 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 honesty, it is at the end to benefit us bringing happiness in this life and to be saved in the day of judgment. Wherever you go, try to explain his rights, subhanahu wa ta'ala, is going to end up benefiting you as a worshiper of him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yes. Now that uh, will take me, uh, actually will redefine what I said in the, in the beginning of the episode. In fact, what you, from what your explanation, what you explained, it means that the intention of someone that he wants to do good, but he doesn't do it. In fact, it's not a really intention, but it's just a wish. That he has a wish and a hope, but it's not really an intention. Uh, because anything, somebody is hoping to be a doctor, but he doesn't work for it. He doesn't study hard to be a doctor. So he just has a wish or a hope. Right. Uh, am I right? Uh, yes, yes, you, you are right. But I think uh, uh, the, the uh, matter of intention is, is very... Uh, wide range of, of cases and, and options. We're going to talk about that maybe in short and the future, about when we talk about the intention in Islam and, and ibadat and worshiping uh, especially, but to rush to that uh, point. Uh, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is so merciful and so generous, subhanahu wa ta'ala, and because he knows everything, azza sometimes you'll be rewarded only by your intention. Subhanallah. Sometimes you need to combine between your intention and your work. Mm, mashallah. Uh, we will go for a quick break. Please stay with us. How can you deny the oneness of Allah? Allahu Akbar. Back to the Prophet. Join Sheikh Amar in the program Back to the Prophet, wherein he teaches us practical lessons from the Prophet's life and how this can help us to overcome our challenges in the present. We talk about the life example of the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, seeking guidance for ourselves. In the early days after the revelation of the Holy Quran, the Muslims were greatly persecuted, so much so that quite a few Muslims had to leave Arabia and migrate to Africa to live among Ahl Kitab, Christian people who followed the Gospel of Christ. How can you deny the oneness of Allah? Allahu Akbar. Welcome back. Uh, Professor Muhammad, before we went to uh, uh, the break, we were talking about the intention. And uh, you mentioned something about that some people might get rewarded for just their intention. Would you please uh, give us more details about this? Yes. Uh, and this is, as I, I said, uh, reflect 
uh, how much Allah is so generous, how ta'ala, merciful as the Wajal, and because He knows what is inside our heart. He knows really our uh, real sincerity and honesty and seriousness. Sometimes you have a good intention. You are serious, you are honest. But the field of practicing your intention is blocked mm-hmm. unwillingly. Something out of your hand. And Allah knows that, subhanahu wa ta'ala. In that case, you will be rewarded, inshallah mm-hmm. ta'ala. But whatever that field is opened, and it is up to you now to execute your will, your intention, but you did not. Mm-hmm. In that case, reflect that you are not honest and sincere about what you mm-hmm. have intent in your heart. So that way we came to the hadith of Nabi alayhi sallam, the Prophet saying alayhi sallam, that man hamma bi hasanatin wa amilaha and wa ashu hasanat, if you have an intention to make one good hasana, and you did, you take one, one good deed, uh, yes. you wrote it ten times, mm-hmm. and you have an intention to make a good one good deed, you are not able to do it, you are not able. You are not able. You are not able. Because the, 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 the general concept is that you just to have the intention, you will get rewarded even if you didn't do it and you are able to do it. All right. If you are able to do it, you are not doing it, you don't get nothing. You get nothing. nothing. Yes. If, because you are able to practice it, mm. to transfer from the field of intention and wish to the field of practicing. Mm. But suppose you don't have that capability. You are blocked. You are prevented from transferring your intention into work. Allah knows about this, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah will reward this, subhanahu wa ta'ala. You have an intention of one good hasana, will be rewarded one good hasana. Mm. If you did it, ten hasana, mashallah ta'ala. But that we'll talk about in, in some details in the future about the importance of the, the intention in the section of, of uh, act of worshipping, inshallah ta'ala. Inshallah, yes. You mentioned through your um, uh, information that acts of worshipping will lead to happiness. But sometimes we see some people who are very disciplined and they look very righteous, they do everything, they, but they look like they are not happy or they look like they have hardship in their life. How do you explain this? Right. What, what do you mean by happiness in this right. case? First of all, we have to say that Islamic law in general, not just the, the section of worshipping, no, Islamic law in general, as we said, this is the, the great uh, aim of this Islamic law to bring every good things to the human being and prevent every bad thing to the human beings mm-hmm. and to fulfill all his needs and to bring happiness to that person, to that human being in this life and happiness hereafter. Now, the definition of happiness, because it is very uh, 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 relatively could be defined from person to another one, mm-hmm. but we have our own Islamic definition about happiness. And we can take that definition from the life of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This is the best way to define something. Mm-hmm. To go back to his life, Ali Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, see how he did understand the commandment of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, how did he practice Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, how he was doing in his life, Ali Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And no one can say that he was not happy, person Ali Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He was mm-hmm. a happy yes. person. But that happiness does have a special definition. If you could put it this way, any person who is pleased with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, radin mm. Allah, mm. has a pleasant inside his heart toward Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He feels that what Allah given him subhanahu wa ta'ala is so, so much. Mm. He can even uh, express his appreciation toward Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's in a, in, in a full pleasant with him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. At hmm. the same time, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him enough sufficiency so he is not in need to anyone. He has enough money, he has enough uh, little home, uh, enough maybe uh, ride to go to his work. So he has that sufficiency. Mm-hmm. has a self-sufficient now. He is not in need to anyone. Sufficiency. Kifaya. Mm. That's what the Prophet used to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for. Allah make the rizq of al, the, the fellow of Muhammad to be sufficiency, sufficient. Mm. So he's in, in, in that level, alayhi salam, 
Not that much, not that little, he's okay. He's not a need to anyone, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Uh, and uh, as a matter of fact, he never borrowed any money Alisa, from anyone for himself. Mm. He did for others. Because we have some stories that he was in debt or something like this. For others. For others. Not for himself, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Alayhi never sallam. ask anyone, give me one dinar or one, 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 mm. one penny, because he needed to, to spend it on, on himself, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But for others, to help others. Yes. For his guests, for, for some needy people, some, some poor people. People used to buy something uh, with a debt, like uh, mm. uh, buy something, and he pays later on, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And this is the story of the uh, his his shield uh, ah, okay. with, with that yes. uh, Jewish yes. man. Yes, yes. He bought that uh, that yes. amount of, of wheat for 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 that person. He was in a need uh, to that food, so that's why he did, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So if you put now the, the combination of f you are in full pleasant with Allah subhanahu wa taala, you are uh, a full uh, self sufficient person, and The third one, you are in a progress of helping others and fulfilling your responsibilities toward everyone. In that case, you are a happy person. If you take any one of these three factors, you cannot be a happy person. Hmm. If you are pleased with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, have enough money, but you are uh, in a short of, of filling responsibilities toward yourself, toward your husband, wife, your children, your neighbor, your employee. You cannot be a happy person. Mm. But every person, when he put his head on his pillow at the end of the, the day and say, Alhamdulillah, I tried, my Lord. I am in a full pleasant with you. I cannot express my appreciation to the, to the bounties you have given me the, the whole day, the whole life. I have enough, alhamdulillah. I'm not in need of anyone. I try my best this day to fulfill my responsibility toward my wife, my kids. Oh Allah, if I came up with some shortage, oh Allah, forgive me. That's a happy person. Otherwise, he cannot be happy. So this happiness is very uh, uh, big meanings with very little uh, requirement. So one does have it, inshallah ta'ala, will be happy, inshallah ta'ala. Subhanallah, you mentioned uh, something very important. Uh, when I was in America, they were talking about what is the definition of rich, hmm. someone who is rich. And many definitions, they come up with many definitions. And what you said is, really, it means somebody is rich because he doesn't need anybody and he's not in debt and he has sufficient of what he has. So really, he, this is what his rich is. That's what he said, alayhi wa sallam. ليس الغنى عن كثرة العرض لكن الغنى غنى النفس. Uh, you are inside, you are rich from within. Mm. And subhanAllah, rich person, rich person, if you talk about, about richness now, the rich person uh, does not require a lot of money to show his, his richness. Mm. He is a rich person. Whether he has a lot of money or little money, but as long as he is sufficient, he has no need to anyone, yes. he is a rich person. And that rich person, if he is pleased with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and he's fulfilling his responsibility, he's going to reflect his happiness now on others. SubhanAllah, yes. MashaAllah. Mm -hmm. uh, let's now talk about al ibadat the, the acts of worshipping to Allah. And we mentioned that the acts of worshipping or the rules that uh, we do for worshipping Allah has a reflection on al-mu'amalat al al with others, how to deal with others. But what are the benefits of that person who is really uh, doing these actions? Is there any kind of benefits upon him? Well, uh, a lot of benefits, subhanAllah. And the deeper you go, thinking about how Allah uh, organized this subhanAllah and put it uh, to be uh, a reflection of your sincerity of worshiping him, subhanAllah, the more you'll get benefit. Human beings is a, a combination of, as we said before, soul, spirit, uh, emotional uh, actions and reactions, uh, your brain, your body. So totally, if you combine all of this, you are a human being. And that's what's different between human being and an animal. Animal does have a body, mm -hmm. uh, does have instinct, right? Yes. Now, if you put all these together, spirit and soul, and heart, 
body and brain or mind that create human beings. Uh, this worshiping has come to fulfill all these, all these five, maybe elements, or 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 or, or words. When you go to to prayer, when you uh, recite uh, the whole book of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, when you are alone and you mention His name, glorifying Him, Subhanallah, 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 La ilaha illallah. Subhanallah, that when he said, alayhi uh, salam, alhamdulillah, he tamla un mizan. Wa subhanallah, alhamdulillah, he tamla ayna, tamla umabina sama yul art. Just one saying, alhamdulillah, that will fill your, your skill of judgment. Yeah. Hasanat, good, mm. good deeds. Subhanallah, alhamdulillah, uh, will, will fill uh, like between the, 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 the heaven and the earth. Good deeds. It's so great. Mm. So, in your prayer, in your reciting, in your Mention the, the, the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you are doing all of this, glorifying Him subhanahu wa ta'ala, does have a great reflection on your spirit. This is uh, the, the fuel of your spirit. You know spirit like what? Spirit like some, some kind of, of, of body, or maybe element connected to your body, but saying all the time, it is my place not here. Release me, please release me, let me go up, let me go higher and higher. But she has to be combined with, with the body. Hmm. So in order to enjoy the, this, this spirit and give it its fuel and its need and its right, you recite Quran Kareem, you make two raka'ah in the midnight, you pray with the jama'ah, uh, you try to uh, think about the greatness of Allah in this universe, ta'ala, and you feel your spirit is uh, enjoying hmm. and be released and have some, some, some comfort as if that she's going to leave your body and go away and, and far, far, like the Sahaba, uh, when they were in, in that battlefield. And when that Sahabi, he said, Wallahi inni la ajdu riha, uh, al -jannat min uhud. He did not smell it by his physical. He smelled the, the, the smell of the Jannah, the Jannah behind the mountain of Uhud. Because his spirit was able to, to leave Mm. and fly and go upper and higher and get that that sense mashallah unfortunately that's all the time that we have for today please join us next episode we have more to say wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh it's more than just coincidence you look around and see the earth the moon the sun and the sky a beautiful creation of Allah so how could you deny? How can you deny the oneness of Allah? Allahu Akbar How can you deny the oneness of Allah? Allahu Akbar